What's going on everyone? Adam from Dimebag Rig Project here. Hope you're all well, staying safe in quarantine and implementing social distancing. Uh, last week on the 24th of April 2020, I uploaded a photo of my finished Washburn 333 smashed mirror Paul Stanley guitar. A lot of positive feedback guys, really appreciate that. Um, I'm quite happy with what came out. Uh, it's sold now. Um, hopefully it will uh, be packaged up and sent over this week. So yeah, I just wanted to go through uh, all your comments and just explain exactly how I made this guitar. So let's go right ahead and explain. So here we have the Washburn 333 in its original um, finish. So all um, stock hardware, the original pattern, as you can see, it's the uh, import version uh, for the EU. Um, yeah, a lot different to the American one, which is a lot more blue without the uh, fade around the edge. So as you can see, it uh, came in the original case as well. Headstock, pretty standard. Um, so the first thing we had to do was uh, strip off the um, hardware. So that's everything off there, leaving it to the finish. That gave me something to work off of with the router. Again, there's another photo just there. Just showing you exactly what it was before it was uh, routed out. Now I've got the idea of getting a template from the picture I saw of Dimebag uh, holding a... Um, kind of like a polystyrene or Fomex cut out of his uh, Razorback. So the first thing I did was I um, laid down some Fomex on top of it and used the guitar as a template to do so. So I cut the Fomex out, uh, laid it on top. Uh, this enabled me to shave down any, the, any piece of the Fomex that was hanging over the body as such. This picture of me there with the uh, cutout. So yeah, after I did that, I uh, gauged a line around the perimeter of the um, stent of the uh, template as such uh, of about five to six mil. And then uh, as the as the Fomex is really easy to use, I just used a scalpel um, to cut out the pickup holes, the fluid holes, and then just used a drill bit um, through the back of the guitar, through where the uh, holes are for the. Uh, tone knobs and jack and the uh, toggle switch etc so uh sorry i don't have any videos of me actually routing out the guitar but the uh the guitar here um has been routed out leaving a edge around the perimeter as you can see uh, now it's quite hard to um when i got up to the neck um, it was quite hard to get a router in and around them little corners, uh, but I managed to get around that. Um, and as you can see just here, a photo of the second template that I did. Um, obviously the, the original white one was shaved down, the holes were in the right places, it was lined up. Um, the white stencil went inside the routed out guitar. So from that, I could gauge if anything was out of line or anything like that. So again, just another little photo there of the uh, routing out that I did. Obviously, you can see just there, I've, I've dipped it in some places a little bit harder than the rest of the guitar. Um, but yeah, just, just leaving, that, leaving that edge around the perimeter so that when the mirror goes in, it finished flush with the original body height. And lastly, just to show you a third template. So the uh, wooden one could be shaved down ever so slightly. And this um, thick card one uh, was the final template that I used um, to transfer that shape and holes and everything like that onto the piece of glass. And as you can see here, a nice snug fit for that template. So the fun bit, transferring a template onto glass. Now the piece of glass that I have isn't actually glass or a mirror. It's acrylic mirror. Um, I did buy a piece of glass um, and put a glass cutter to it and it didn't crack the, the way I wanted it to. So uh, acrylic glass or at least acrylic mirror um, works better in, in my honest opinion. It's And it's got exactly the same finish and it's I think it's not as heavy either. Um, so yeah transfer complete on there uh, as you can see um, next thing I did was get a jigsaw and start cutting the edges of the template with a jigsaw um, I used a metal blade not 
physically made of metal, but a, a, a blade made for cutting metal. So it's a lot finer toothed um, for using things like plastics and stuff like that. So there's me there just going round the perimeter with a jigsaw and cutting that out. Now I did the same with the um, pickup holes and the Floyd holes and just got a file, like a rasp, and, and just filed off all the edges once I was happy. And the last thing I did was obviously have to drill the holes to the right uh, width from behind the back of the, uh, the new glass or acrylic template, which I'd done. Now I'm really kicking myself here because I didn't film any videos of me scoring and cutting the um, guitar, but um, I used the picture just here as a uh, basis of how to score my lines. Um, did that with a Sharpie, obviously marked out where the lines were. Got a nice sharp Stanley knife and scored those lines. Now, looking at this picture, it looks 98% that it's the same as dimes but some of the cracks were so close together that when you scored the line they just weren't cracking as a, as a pair they the cracks were, were diverting out somewhere else etc so uh, yeah we get the guitar we lay it down and um, yeah just piece by piece glue the back of each piece uh, working from the bottom horn working your way towards the um, tremolo and working up and up and up and up as until you finally get the last piece in so now the guitar had uh, set for a day uh, I could pick it up and start working on the hardware um, got all my hardware from a shop on eBay I'll put a post below a link uh, first of all started off with a jack plate as you can see just there screwing up them last few holes now just be careful you've got a pilot drill uh, all your holes for any hardware um, as the same as the pickups the jack plate etc uh, as you can see just here the um, chrome knobs have just been fitted um, exactly the same ones as what dime had these ones are just push fit on then they don't require an allen key or anything like that they've got a rubber rubber inside they just slot on over the uh, pegs Pickups. Um, I'm fitting a dime bucker in the bridge and a the original washburn um, in the in the neck just there. Feeding the uh, cables through, making sure they're all nice and tight, ready for uh, soldering up um, from behind. Again, the chrome um, pickup plates are from the shop. That I'll put a link below. So again, like I just mentioned, you just got to make sure you pilot drill all your holes um, just before you uh, fit the uh, eight screws in those uh, surrounds. Because the last thing you want is to be driving a screw through and <laughs> ironically have the uh, have the mirror finish crack even more. That's the whole point. I was trying to keep the cracks the way I had done them and not, not add any more cracks to the... Uh, guitar I just thought at this point um, of the build that I would start peeling back some of the protective film just to show you uh, the finished article as such that the uh, mirror really does shine through nicely with that protective film off now the next thing is the tremolo as you can see just here it's the original washburn one that was fitted I don't think they're that great some people like them some people don't um, I didn't really have the money to go out and buy a original Floyd Rose like Dime had um, but yeah just put it in get the get the spring sprung and my little trick is to use the uh, the back plate as a leveler as such and that will enable you to level the um, plate of the uh, Floyd Rose tremolo to the body so after winding the uh, legs up nice and tight we we'll wound the uh, plate up nicely so that it is flush I could then start putting the strings on the guitar now I'm using DR strings um, going in the C drop C tuning for this so as you do just start feeding these strings in the holes 
tighten them pegs up. Feed your strings through. Go from there. So once that was done, you give it a little play. Obviously at this point I hadn't um, wired up the hardware. But we're in tune and balanced. And we'll just take off the last bit of protective film. bit of a nightmare to get off if I'm honest. Last bit, drum roll. There we go. And there we go guys. That's that. All set. All peeled back. All hardware on. So, what do you think? These are the finished photos. These are the ones that I put up on Instagram. Again, thank you for all the lovely comments you left me. I had a few a few negative ones, so it's not exactly like dimes, but you know, I could I could have sent this to a guy and uh, paid out the nose to have it done by someone else, but I decided to do it myself because I'm a carpenter by trade and I had the tools, so uh, I wanted to challenge myself. And uh, yeah, I have something to do in quarantine. <laughs> now I wasn't quite happy with the um, the binding that I'd done on this guitar. Um, as you can see, it's it's got the white edging around the edge just there. Um, but I just uh, retaped it up and uh, sprayed it over. So that concludes the video guys, hope you um, enjoyed what I put together for you. Um, from taking this from a Washburn 333 dime bolt to uh, what we have right here. So uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Tell me if you would buy one, if you'd like me to do one for you, maybe, who knows. Um, I've seen a few of these on a website called DH Gate. Let me know if you've bought one of them off there. Um, I'd be interested to see how they perform. Um, but yeah, other than that, really enjoyed making this. Really enjoyed putting together the video. Thanks again for all the kind comments on the uh, Instagram uh, post that I did last week. And um, yeah, this is going off to Brendan. I hope you enjoy it, dude, because um, yeah, it's a pretty kick-ass guitar. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Hit that subscribe button and um, rock on. Thank you.